everyone. Today uh, we're going to be doing something interesting and possibly sacrilegious, depending on who you are out there, to this Marlin 336 in 3030. Um, this thing is definitely not without its drawbacks. I'm going to be breaking that a lot more down in the review that I do on this thing, uh, which is to come in the near future, as well as a comparison uh, to a, a similar model from Henry. But um, again, you guys know I'm a big fan of Midwest Industries. Really, the thing that got me into lever guns in the first place was seeing um, that Midwest Industries was making handguards for rifles like this one. Uh, to me, it was just something cool and different. Uh, you know, the market's been ultra saturated with AR-15, so seeing something in a rifle caliber that was different uh, got me really excited and actually convinced me to get lever guns. And sp again, specifically, one that was going to be compatible with the Midwest Industries handguard. So this model of Marlin is going to accommodate the Midwest Industries handguard as configured from the factory, which is convenient. However, as I understand it, they are making an adapter for the ones with the barrel band. As you can tell, this one has the barrel cap at, or the uh, handguard cap here. The ones that have the band that goes all the way around the barrel and everything, um, I believe they are making an adapter. So what we're going to install today will also work on those. But again, uh, that was not announced when I bought this. So I made sure it had the end cap here to allow me to install the handguard that we're going to be doing uh, very shortly. So uh, I guess with that, um, we might as well go ahead and, uh, and show how to install the handguard on this Marlin 336 and 3030. And just FYI, it is uh, usable with some other models out there. Um, but again, it will work with this 336 with the end cap here. All right, so I have in front of me the instructions for Midwest Industries. Again, one of the things that I appreciate about Midwest is having clear instructions with all their products, as well as all the tools and accessories generally um, that you're gonna need to install it, especially if there's specialty tools required. Uh, so first up, again, we're just gonna go line by line here. Make sure that the rifle is unloaded and pointed in the safe direction. Our magazine tube is empty and our chamber is empty. And step two, repeat number one. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that again. Safety is on because this is a 336 that has a safety. In fact, I'm not sure uh, where the safety's got installed or if they've always been around to be completely honest with you. So we'll <laughs> go with that. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I have my vice set up here and I actually have a Midwest Industries mouse pad that I use uh, in case I want to basically use these as like soft jaws since I don't have that uh, um, ability normally. And I'm just gonna get this thing positioned well and gently tighten down here. All right, so I got the rifle locked down here in my vise using that uh, <laughs> little mouse pad here. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is slide off the end cap and the handguard and there's uh, two little flathead screws, one on each side here that I'm going to loosen up in order to take this handguard off. I'm just going to use my little Leatherman here. Hopefully we should be able to get, yeah, there we go. Get enough on here to break the torque. And put those in a safe place. All right, so we have our end cap here removed. And you may notice though, that the handguard is still retained by our magazine tube. So that's gonna require us doing some work here on the front end. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the plug. Again, um, this is something that uh, isn't too difficult, but does get a little bit intensive and there are springs here under pressure that can start launching things. So you do have to be a little bit careful, but we'll go ahead and undo the little screw down here, hold that end plate on while we pull that out. And then the whole magazine tube should come off along with our handguard. So we're just gonna loosen up this fastener down below here. And even though nothing should come apart yet, I'm just gonna hold my thumb or finger over this end cap to make sure that once I completely remove this fastener, that it doesn't come flying apart. And then there's a little pin coming down from the barrel end. There we go. And then e ease that spring pressure off. Set that down and now we can slide the whole magazine tube off and slide our handguard off. You also want to remove the uh, original handguard retaining band as well. Get that back up in there, reinsert our fastener. and tighten it back down. 
Okay. All right, so now that we have um, the magazine tube back installed, what we're gonna go ahead and do is get this um, handguard installed and the front end is gonna be the end with the sling loop. The rear end is gonna be the one with the little tangs sticking out. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is just get the tabs locked in back here. You're gonna know it's in place when it's perfectly flush with the receiver. Let's see if we can, there we go. And if we look through, should be able to see that line up with the fastener slots up here. Now, because this is a 3030 and not a 4570, I'm gonna have to use these washers in between the fasteners. Um, and in order to do this, uh, I'm gonna use some tweezers because it's really skinny in there. Um, and there's no way I'm gonna be able to get my fingers through. So I'm gonna get some of the included thread locker on the fastener here and get this washer on some tweezers and just hold that in place while I push the fastener through. All right. I would say first attempt failed. So this is far from my first attempt here. This has proven to be a very, very fiddly oper operation here. Uh, it's gonna take a lot of patience. So it might be better to have a gunsmith do this. I've already worked through a couple camera batteries and had to plug in my lights, but okay, we got this first one in. So I'm just gonna get that started enough to get it from this other side. So same process. Get the washer on some tweezers. If you have some good sticky grease, one of the tricks we always did in the Air Force to keep washers in place was stick some grease on the washer and stick some grease over the nut plate and that would usually hold things in place well enough for us to get things torqued down. But I don't want to get grease. So we'll see if we can get everything lined up here. If you have a 4570, you're in luck, because again, this is not something you have to do with a 4570. All right, so tweezers is the way to go. Try this many other ways. Tweezers is the way to go. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down. I'm actually gonna grab my instructions again to make sure, see if we torque it now or torque it in a second. So according to the instructions, we're just supposed to lightly tighten it. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, now there's this little uh, copper colored fastener back here. Let's see what the size is. And this is gonna go right here where the handguard meets the receiver. And we're just gonna install this. And we're gonna want to pull down on the handguard as we do it. And this is not something we're gonna be torquing down. We just want it to lightly come in contact with the magazine tube. Get it started. Okay. So we're gonna gently tighten this while we pull down on the handguard. All right, so just made contact. Again, we are not torquing it down. Now that that's making contact, we can come back up here to the front and torque down these fasteners. All right, so now this thing is good to go. If you want, you can go ahead and ins um, install some of the rail sections. Now, if you wanna mount them in the 45 degree positions here, it does have special fasteners that are specifically labeled special fastener, um, but everywhere else you can just use your regular M-Lock accessories. So now that this is all installed, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. All right, so now that we have this handguard installed, this thing is almost a completely different rifle. Now, a lot of you guys are probably wondering, although if you've made it this far, you're probably not wondering, but many of you are, were probably wondering, why would you do this to a lever gun anyway? They're not meant to be able to do some of the things that, people, that you would need to do with an M-Lock handguard. Um, and again, this kind of goes back to some of the things I was saying earlier on in the video. Um, 
the AR market is so saturated that people are just looking for something different and something fun and interesting to do. And this is one way to do that. Second of all, the 3030 is still a very practical, very uh, applicable cartridge for a lot of the varmint hunting that people would like to do with things like hogs or coyotes or anything else. So because of that, you can mount a light to this and use this on those hog hunts and make this 3030 just as practical for those purposes as something like a 300 blackout. Now, again, there's gonna be advantages to semi-auto in that configuration, um, but for those of you who like running a lever gun, um, again, this is just gonna set it apart from everyone else out there and give you some extra functionality. Um, I, I probably will not mount a vertical grip to this, but you could if you wanted. Again, lights, lasers, whatever else you wanna do that's gonna make this the Hog Slayer 1000 or, or whatever name you wanna give your 3030. Now, they are also doing these for Henry rifles. Um, the process for Henry's is gonna be much more complicated than this one. So that one I definitely recommend having a gunsmith help you with. Um, but this one I think is within reason for a person to do it themselves if you have some uh, awareness. But if you are at all um, on the fence about it, just have a gunsmith do it. It's, it's, it's just gonna save you a lot of hassle and headache and you don't have to worry about breaking anything and that, that can go a long way for people. Um, so just as a reminder, uh, generally speaking, I don't pay for the Midwest Industries products that I show you here on camera. As I've said with many other Midwest Industry product reviews and install videos, Midwest Industries does send me these products for free. Um, I don't get paid by them. I don't get kickbacks for guys using my coupon code, um, but they do give me a coupon code to give you guys a discount on stuff like this. So I'll have it here at the bottom of the screen. The code Oregon Trail will give you a discount on any Midwest Industries products from their website. So something like this, it's gonna take a significant chunk of the price off or any of the other cool stuff they have on their website. Um, I, again, I've yet to be disappointed by any of their stuff um, and you're gonna know more about my thoughts on this handguard and what it allows me to do with this thing once I do a review in the future. Uh, if you're not subscribed already, definitely do that so you can see the review of the handguard and this rifle in general, as well as a comparison uh, of this versus a Henry 3030. Um, if you are so inclined, I do have a Patreon page where you can go and support the channel financially. That really does help me be able to get 3030 ammo to go out and test rifles like this. We do, uh, I do all my content there early. We do live streams, giveaways. We have a Discord server set up to have more uh, active interaction. Um, just a lot of cool opportunities for people over there who, uh, who want to financially support the channel. And I really do appreciate that helps me make a lot more content than I'd be able to otherwise. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go and throw those in the comment section down below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Um, but anyway, with all that said, as always, I hope you got something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.